what is entanglement? What is quantum entanglement? So some of those big brains back in the 1900s realized through the double slit experiment that there is some non-physical property to the universe. Quantum connectedness, a connectedness that occurs beyond our perceptible level in which measurements on one isolated system have a non-classical consequences for the outcome of a measurements performed in a different part of the system. So if you think about that, what that means is that non-classical implies there's no physical connection between these two things. But for some reason, when I do something over here, this is impacted over here. And this is what Einstein called spooky action at a distance. Why is that happening? Why is it that if I make it a measurement or change something over here, I can see an impact over here? If you've been watching my streams, you already know the answer. How is that non-locality, is what they call it, non-local interaction, faster than light interaction? How is that possible? Everything is connected all the time. Everything is connected all the time. There is no distance. Distance is an illusion. And what this means is there is an ether. There is an ether, guys. There is an ether that connects all points in space and time. That is how all of this is possible. That's how I can change something over here and see an impact over here. Because there's an interconnectedness. Like if I were to take this uh, box here, you could say this flat surface is our space time. Well, what we're doing is we're making a thing like this. Connecting this point and this point, like this. My hand represents the ether, the mechanism by which we can do this. End of the day, it's all just geometry. It's all just geometry. You know, we're connecting two points that we don't see as physically connected, but that they are, that they are connected. So let me pull up. I think I have a double slit experiment. So right off the bat, everything radiates at a unique energy signature. So this is a nod to Tesla, right? Energy, frequency, and waves. That's what Tesla said. And so what we've realized when you consider this idea of the ether is that you realize everything really is waves. And so therefore, we can have these interactions, these wave-like interactions perturbating through this ether into different points in our space and time. As mentioned earlier, everything is made up of infinite potentiality, and the moment consciousness decides to create from that, creation takes place. The findings of physicist Thomas Young in his famous double slit experiment helps to show this, and while doing so, sheds light on the quantum field and how our entire reality operates. And here we are! the granddaddy of all quantum weirdness, the infamous double slit experiment. Okay, here we to go. To understand this experiment, we first need to see how particles or little balls of matter act. If we randomly shoot a small object, say a marble at the screen, we see a pattern on the back wall where they went through the slit and hit. Now, if we add a second slit, we would expect to see a second band duplicated to the right. Now, let's look at waves. The waves hit the slit and radiate out, striking the back wall with the most intensity directly in line with the slit. The line of brightness on the back screen shows that intensity. This is similar to the line the marbles make. Okay, so you guys understand wave patterns, right? Wave pattern on the wall versus if you were to shoot particles at the wall. You're going to get two different patterns. Okay, now let's get to the fun Something part. Something different happens. 
If the top of one wave meets the bottom of another wave, they cancel each other out. Interference. So now there is an interference pattern on the back wall. Places where the two tops meet are the highest intensity, the bright lines, and where they cancel, there is nothing. So, when we throw things, that is, matter, through two slits, we get this, two bands of hits. And with waves, we get an interference pattern of many bands. Good so far. Now, let's go quantum. <laughs> An electron is a tiny, tiny bit of matter, like a tiny marble. Okay, so we're going to shoot electrons now through our slits, and we're going to see what happens. Spoiler alert, we're going to end up getting a wave pattern. We should get, like the marbles, two bands. What? An interference pattern. We fired electrons tiny bits of matter through. We get a pattern like waves, not like little marbles. How? 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 How, chat? How is it that when we shoot electrons through the slits, how are they acting like waves? Almost like they're not particles at all. The pieces of matter create an interference pattern like a wave. It doesn't make sense. But physicists are clever. They thought maybe those little balls are bouncing off each other and creating that pattern. So they decide to shoot electrons through one at a time. There is no way they could interfere with each other. But after an hour of this, the same interference pattern is seen to emerge. The conclusion is inescapable. The single electron leaves as a particle, becomes a wave of potentials, goes through both slits, and interferes with itself to hit the wall like a particle. It has, the electrons must be waves. That is the only possible answer, right? Has to be. For there to be an interference pattern, they have to be going through both slits and interfering with themselves, constructive and destructive interference. That must be what's happening. So we know that. But mathematically, it's even stranger. It goes through both slits and it goes through neither. And it goes through just one and it goes through just the other. All of these possibilities are in superposition with each other. But physicists were completely baffled by this. So they decided to peek and see which slit it actually goes through. They put a measuring device by one slit to see which one it went through and let it fly. <laughs> but the quantum world is far more mysterious than they could have imagined. When they observed, the electron went back to behaving like a little marble. It produced a pattern of two bands, not an interference pattern of many. The very act of measuring or observing which slit it went through meant it only went through one, not both. Wow. I was muted, but I just said, wow. So no big deal. GTE says it's like earth and sun scenario through light from the sun takes eight minutes. Though light takes eight minutes to get us, you take the sun away and the earth will, will know about it instantly. That is actually a, a really significant question related to whether or not gravity moves at the speed of light or not. I think we're going to find that it would actually move faster than the speed of light. But we'll see. Um, so what happens? We have our electrons going through our two slits. They create an interference pattern. But then when we put a detector there, something that's just detecting which one they go through, the interference pattern breaks down. This is the biggest mystery in all of physics. Why does that happen? Why does that happen? This is, and this experiment, the reason why I showed that experiment is the double slit experiment is the key to understanding coherence and decoherence. It is the key to understanding 
how you can make something go from a deter deterministic point, it's right here, to it being in potentially multiple different locations at the same time. That's what the double slit experiment shows. And all of the faster than light communication methods are all based on the double slit experiment. All the conf apparatus configurations are all based on it. And they're based on the idea of turning something that is deterministic into something that is random. Something that is random. That's what they're based on. And honestly, the more I think about what I just said, the more insane and trippy it is. What does this actually mean? What we just saw right there. It is straight up, no two ways about it, magic. It's magic. How is that happening? Somehow the universe is reacting to another stimulus. The other stimulus being the measurement device. The measurement device is causing coherence to occur. It's causing coherence to occur. From a situation where the electron could be anywhere, decoherent, the electron appears at a single point. But if we were to shoot multiple electrons through, it's like each electron knows where the last electron was going to go and where the next electron is going to go. It's almost like each electron can see the future and knows where it needs to go end up. That is, that's magic, guys. And that's what teleportation protocols are based on. Teleportation protocols are based on tricking the universe or converting something that's matter into a wave where now it can be anywhere. So what's the answer? What's the answer to a double slit experiment? Well, let's recap. Let's recap what we've learned so far. The answer to non-locality is the ether, is an extra dimension, right? Boop. I'm connecting these two points through an extra dimension known as my hand right here. That is the answer to non-locality. And so if I make a ripple, a disturbance in the medium, I can see interaction in other points in the medium. That's entanglement. I can do something over here, and weirdly, it impacts over here. So then what is the answer for why that changes? Well, anything, any action I do to the medium is going to have a ripple in that medium. It's going to have an effect in that medium. I'm skipping ahead here, but one of the things that we're about to review in this scientific paper that we're going to look at here in just a minute is whether or not nature will allow retrocausality to occur. Will nature allow retrocausality to occur or will nature correct for itself in some way, shape, or form? And I think that's the ultimate answer to why the wave function breaks down. We are seeing a property of nature that is magic. It's almost like an auto-correction mechanism. It's like we're seeing randomness and then we're saying, wait, how can that be random? I just threw one thing. Show me your magic trick. And the universe goes, nope, just kidding. Just kidding. Nope, I wasn't cheating. But you're like, no, I just saw you cheating a second ago. But now when I looked, you're, you, it's not, you're not cheating anymore. The universe, I think the double slit experiment is the universe's autocorrection mechanism to prevent retrocausality from occurring. Retrocausality cannot occur because the wave function breaks down if you try. Hmm. That's my theory. That's my thesis. 